say hallelujah. hallelujah amen for this is the day that the lord has made that we ought to rejoice and be glad in it amen anybody grateful to be alive today anybody grateful for god making ways for you protecting you from danger seen as well as unseen amen and our god is worthy to be praised amen we welcome you today amen to saint john missionary baptist church 2173 davis Bennett road Midfield, Georgia, 30441. We thank God for all of you who are physically. We thank God even for those who have already joined in virtually. Amen. And we come today to fulfill the biblical mandate. And that's not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. We come to worship God in spirit and worship God in truth. Amen. And today, amen, if you don't mind, if you don't mind standing, let us, amen, go before God in prayer. Amen. That we can get in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. How many want to be in the presence of God? There's something about being in the presence of God. Amen. Things happen when we're in the presence of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come now to say thank you. Dear God, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for life and the portion of health and strength that you blessed us with. And dear God, here fear your believing children have gathered themselves together, dear God, to worship you in spirit and to worship you in truth. Dear God, we come today forgetting about ourselves and concentrating on you. Dear God, because you're a holy God, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, creating us a clean heart, renewing us the right spirit, oh God. Dear God, that what we offer to you today will be acceptable in your sight. Dear God, we pray right now that you are moved by your Holy Spirit. Dear God, you declare in your word that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And dear God, we take your word for what it is, dear God. And dear God, we ask now, dear God, that a miracle will take place today. We ask today, dear God, that an experience will take place. Uh, dear God, we pray, dear God, that a mighty move will happen in this place of worship today. Dear God, we know some need you for one thing and some need you for another. But we believe, dear God, if we lose ourselves in praise, uh, if we lose ourselves in worshiping you, uh, we believe, dear God, because you said that we delight in you, you will give us the desires of our heart. Uh, so, dear God, have your way today, dear God. Uh, dear God, move in such a way, dear God, uh, that those who are dealing with bereavement uh, can rise beyond their 
their circumstance. Uh, those that dealing with sickness uh, can rise beyond their circumstance. Uh, you got those that dealing with depression uh, can rise beyond their circumstance. Uh, have your way, God, uh, in this place of worship. Uh, you God, we come and lift holy hands to you. Uh, we come to God to give you the fruit of our lips. Uh, we come to God to lift our hearts to you, dear God. Uh, have your way, dear God. Uh, dear God, in this place of worship, uh, in those virtual lines, dear God, uh, let your presence be known. Uh, if your presence be made known, uh, we can live the way you want us to live. Uh, if your presence be made known, we can forgive the way you want us to forgive. Uh, have your way, God. Uh, have your way, God. Uh, we ask you in the name of Jesus, we pray. And all my people say, Amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand of praise. And to praise and worship. Assemble themselves to take us in the presence of God. Come on, give God a hand of praise for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord.
Y'all will say hallelujah. How many know we serve a great God? I said, how many know we serve a great God? Let me tell you how great he is. Less than 24 hours. I was flying back on my way from Dallas back to Atlanta. Amen. We had to sit on the airway for an extra 30 minutes because the weather was bad. I was in so much pain because I was suffering. Amen. Amen. Needing a root canal. Amen. Because infection had become in my tooth. And I didn't know at that time that's what was going on. But I was in so much pain. And, and the plane, amen, they finally cleared us to rise up in the air. Amen. And the plane took off. And, and when the plane got up in the air, the plane went up and the, the plane dropped. The plane went back up and the, the plane dropped and, and people was cussing and they were fussing and, and they were hollering because they thought that it was all over. But I was in so much pain that I didn't have sense enough to be scared. I was in so much pain that the turtles didn't even bother me. And I said a prayer. I couldn't pray it out of my mouth because I was in so much pain. But I said a silent prayer to God. And I said, God, I said, give us home safe. I say, but if it's your will for this plane to come down, at least I won't be in pain anymore. But I stop by and tell you, we serve a great God that can do a bundle there upon whatsoever we ask. Oh, thank God. And I don't know about you today, y'all. Maybe you didn't have a rough week. Maybe all your bills are paid. Maybe your health is good. Maybe you ain't got no family problems. Maybe you don't suffer with depression. But if God is a good God, you ought to be able to tell somebody how great is my God. Look to your neighbor and say, how great? How great is my God? He's a great God. He's been so great that I can't sit down on him. He's been so great that I can't quiet. I got to tell somebody. He's a great God. Look at your neighbor and say, he's a great God. If he ain't been great to you, just wait a while. If it ain't never rained in your life, just wait a while. And the rain will fall down. And you won't be able to hold your peace. But we serve a great God. He's worthy. You were asleep last night. And sometimes we take God for granted. We're so used to waking up every morning. We're so used to going to work safe and coming back home every day. But I stopped by to tell you, it didn't have to be that way. So many died on their way to work. So many died in their sleep last night. And we serve a great God. Look at them and say, he's a great God. He's a great God. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Thank you, praise and worship. I needed that. I needed that. Needed that. So God has been so good to me. Yeah. Don't underestimate pain. Yeah. No matter whether it's grieving pain, tooth pain, sick pain, pain ain't nothing but pain. The pain will take you down a road you thought you'd never go. I was in so much pain. If it wasn't for my faith holding me and somebody told me marijuana would take that pain away. If they ever told me cocaine would have took that pain. I see how people get hooked on drugs. Because pain will make you try some things. Can I get a witness of that? But I'm so glad, I'm so glad, I'm so glad, Minister Lee, that God said, I won't allow no more to be on you. That he knew I couldn't take no more. He knew that Friday morning was it. He had to get his boy some relief before he had to come and repent. Can I get a witness of that? I stop by to tell you, he's a great God. He's a great God. Amen. Thank y'all for stirring up my spirit. I needed that. Amen. At this time, now we get ready to be obedient to God. Amen. We're here shortly. But I just want to run these announcements. Amen. Before you this morning. Amen. We're asking, amen, for the fourth Sunday. We're asking everybody, amen, to bring a bag of candy. Amen. Bring a bag of candy. Amen. And um, if you don't believe it, give it people sugar by sugar free candy. It'll cause you a little bit more, but amen. By what you believe in, amen. Amen. We're going to have on the fifth Sunday, we're going to emerge. Amen. The fourth Sunday will be Palm Sunday. Amen. And the fifth Sunday will be Easter Sunday. Amen. We're going to emerge in both churches as we've been trying to do. Amen. One church in two locations. And we're going to have the Easter celebration over at Williams Grove on the fifth Sunday. 
Amen. And we're going to, amen, have, amen, some, some Easter egg hunts and treats for the kids, amen, and refreshments will be served, amen. Amen. So we ask that all members, amen, please bring a bag of candy, amen. We ask all supporters, amen, bring a bag of candy, amen, 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 that we can, amen, put inside the eggs, amen, and amen, and uh, those who want to donate a few dollars are going to have some golden eggs, amen, and they're going to have money on the inside of them, amen, and that's when I become a child and I look for eggs, amen. Amen. So we encourage you, amen, let us support, amen, and we just thank God for you, amen. We thank God for your support in baptism, amen, amen, and amen. We have, have the right hand of fellowship next time a candidate is here, amen. We was missing about three candidates, amen, from St. John. Amen. If you can get with me, amen, soon we can go ahead and amen and take care of that baptism, amen. But we had four uh, candidates, amen, one, amen, who's a dual member, amen, a member of St. John and Williams Grove, amen. And we have other three, amen, who are members of Williams Grove, amen, amen. So, amen, we just thank God, amen, for, amen, a wonderful baptism and them giving their life to Christ, amen. Somebody ought to give God a hand for you, amen. The Bible says the one soul in the angels in heaven. Amen. They rejoice. They can't feel what we feel, but they rejoice. Amen. Amen. So I know we ought to rejoice. Amen. Amen. Let me make know we will have Bible study. Amen. This Wednesday night. This Wednesday night. Amen. At 6 o'clock. Wednesday night. Bible study. Amen. At 6 o'clock. Amen. That may be modified after this Bible study. Amen. But it will be 6 o'clock. Amen. This Wednesday. We encourage you to come out to Bible study, y'all. Amen. Because the Bible said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In Bible study, you can do things that you can't do in worship service. You can't stop me in the middle of a sermon and ask me questions. Amen. And I'll respond to you. But in Bible study, amen, it is more open. Amen. And you can ask questions. Amen. And you can get the answer. Amen. Amen. So we just invite you to be here at 6 o'clock. Amen. On Wednesday. Amen. All those, amen, interested, amen, and in joining Amen. This growing, amen, choir ministry. Amen. We ask, amen. We have rehearsal here every coming up Saturday, coming up to the second and the fourth Sunday. Amen. At 10 a.m. Coming up to the second and fourth Sunday. Amen. On Saturday at 10 a.m. Right here. Amen. And over at Williams Grove. Amen. Coming up to the first Sunday on Saturday. Amen. At 10 a.m. And coming up to the third Sunday. Amen. At rehearsal at 8 a.m. Prior to service. Amen. So we encourage you. Amen. We encourage you. you want to be a part of a growing ministry. God has put singing in your heart. Amen. And not only if you put singing in your heart, but if you have a desire to sing. Amen. Amen. Because amen. I've seen some stuff, amen, since these last few months, amen, come out of some people I didn't know was in them, amen, and I don't think they knew it was in them either, amen, amen, so amen, God is working mightily, amen, so we just thank God for you, amen, there will be other ministries, amen, that will be needing help in, amen, we need help in the ushering ministry, amen, we need help, amen, in the cleaning ministry, amen, amen, and if you have a gift of talent, I know the new members have been coming, we, you have a gift of a talent, amen, we're going to have media ministry, amen, where you, uh, we get, you get assist, amen, the media team, amen. We just want you to not, amen, come in and sit and do nothing, amen. Use your gift for God, amen. Because if you don't use it, you will lose it. Can I get a witness about it? Amen. So we encourage you. Amen. Again, we just thank God for you. Amen. Let us remember midday, midweek Bible study. Amen. 12 noon on Facebook Live. Amen. Then 6 o'clock. Amen. Here. Amen. At the church. Amen. All right. With that being said, amen. At this time, we get ready. Amen. To uplift God's tithes. Amen. And offering. Amen. So that's us understand right where we are. Those who give it virtually, you can go to www.givelify.com. www.givelify.com. Go down to St. John, Amen, Missionary Baptist Church, Amen, Millen, Georgia, Amen, Olympia, Georgia, I think it's on there, Millen, Georgia, Amen, and um, you can give as you've been doing, we thank God, even if our virtual supporters, Amen, we thank God for you. If you'd like to give cash out, Amen, you can go, Amen, to 706 414 706-414-7732, it'll say, Bobby G. Whitney, you will write the check, Amen, and give today, Amen. Amen, amen. So at this time now, amen, let us stand for the blessing. We're going to come around and give in Jesus' name. Amen. Father in heaven, we come right now just to say thank you. We thank you, dear God, for the strength and ability that you've given us to go out and obtain wealth. Thank you, dear God, for the one, dear God, who you're blessed to get to retirement. 
and now they enjoy the fruits of their labor. And dear God, we thank you for how you have blessed the one, dear God, that's unemployed. But dear God, you blessed them, dear God, through family. You blessed them through friends. And, and we rely, dear God, that every good and perfect gift comes from you above. So we bring the tenth, dear God, of what has been given to us. And we ask, dear God, that you will bless these tithes and bless these offerings. That it be used of building and the advancement of your kingdom. Dear God, we come today to give as we are purpose in our heart. And we want our heart to be in line with your word. Dear God, so we ask that you will bless now, dear God, that our giving, no, our living will be in vain is our prayer. Bless, dear God, those who are here to give physically. Bless those, dear God, who are giving virtually. We ask this in Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Starting from the real father and sisters of the ushers. St. John, she was sending her money, amen, and supporting St. John because she wanted to be buried here, amen, but prior to her death, her caretaker, amen, her caretaker, which was her granddaughter, amen, she passed away, and when she passed away, amen, she bought a plot to be buried uh, by her granddaughter down in Macon, amen, where we went on Friday, amen, and we utilized us, amen, she wanted us to do her funeral, amen, so we went and did that, amen, in honor, amen, of her wishes, amen, on behalf of St. John, Amen. So let us keep this new birth of green. Amen. Amen. Family into prayer. Amen. Because they lost a granddaughter one week. Amen. And then lost grandma and mama. Amen. On the next week. Amen. So let us keep them in prayer. That's also fine. Let us keep Reverend, uh, Reverend Missy. Amen. Reverend Missy, the pastor. Amen. Of uh, Spring. What is it? Spring Hill. Spring Hill. Amen. His wife. Amen. Passed away. Amen. She was funeralized on yesterday at Spring Hill. Amen. On Farmers Bridge Road. Farmers Bridge Road in Hepsiford, Georgia. So let us keep the Messy family in prayer. Amen. And there's some I probably can't call now. Let us, when we pray, just say, God, bless all the bereaved. Amen. Amen. Because one day we're going to need somebody to pray for us. Amen. Amen. Glory to God and have your praise. Amen. At this time, now the choirs. Amen. Praise and worship team coming back to lead us. Amen. Again. Amen. As God has led them in their heart. And after that, Amen. We'll come back with the word of God. Amen. If you really enjoy them, come on, give them a hand. Amen. Amen. Come on. Some of y'all was at King Joy last night. Y'all was honored when he came out there. Amen. But this for God's people. Amen.
She did something that King George can't do. She did something for the blues that you can do. Amen. Two us to the brothers of God. Amen. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. to you boy. 
Lord and would do that which has been set out to do. Dear God, have thine own way in this place of worship. And we'll be so careful, dear God, when it's all over to give you alone all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all God people said amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand of praise. Amen. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 57th verse said, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 1.18 says, I'm he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Today, if you will, we'd like to talk from the subject, I'm fighting from my victory position. I'm fighting from my victory position. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm fighting from my victory position. Come on, bless God one more time, amen. The Bible says, now we thank God because of our Lord Jesus Christ, we win against death and its power. The Bible says, which giveth us the victory. We ought to thank God because God giveth us the victory. We don't have to compete to get the victory. God gives us the victory. Look at the neighbors say, I already got the victory. It's important today that the people under God understand that we already got the victory. There's too many people today you are struggling trying to get the victory. But I stopped by to tell you today it's a different when you realize that you already got the victory. When you realize you already got the victory, you move different. When you realize you already got the victory, you walk different. When you already realize you got the victory, you talk different. I, I stopped by to tell you today the people of God is too many. Amen. Immature children of God that is trying to get the victory. But God says, I've already given. Yes. I've given you the victory. Yes. I stopped by the table today. I'm going to give you an earthly example just to show you what it means to already have the victory. I stopped by the table today. Amen. I'll look. Amen. I'll talk. Amen. To Brother Brinkboy for a minute here, Brother Cleveland. Amen. If I can bring my basketball in here, we go down to Simmons Stand. They got a court. Amen. I was always coming. It's going to be right out there. It's going to be a full court. Amen. For the young folk to play on. Amen. But right now, we got to go to our neighbors. Amen. And use theirs until I will manifest itself in here. All you got to do is keep doing what you're doing. It's a lot of stuff going to manifest itself out there. But if I brought a basketball to you, Brother Cleveland, I said, hey, I want to play you one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to 12, all right, and you can get first ball. What would you say? Would you challenge me? Would you take that challenge? you take that challenge. <laughs> but now let me ask you this question. Already in your mind, do you know you got the victory? Do you know you're going to beat me already before we get on the court? Do you really know that? Not for sure. Smart man. Smart man. But he's willing to struggle. He's willing to work to try to get to that thing. The other way, Pastor, you ain't gonna chuck me out now. I know you don't think I was finna say all around the world these people listening. I wasn't gonna take the challenge now. I might get in the back and say, Pastor, take it easy on me now. But I wasn't going to bow down in front of all these people. But I stopped by to tell you, that's the way it is with Christianity. Many times, amen, we're willing to take the challenge, but we're not confident that we can get the victory. It even shows up in our song sometimes. I'm struggling, straining, struggling, struggling, straining. It's so hard to get along, my love. You trying to get the victory. Struggling. You want to be saying, I got the victory. I got the victory. I got, I got, that's it. I, see, when you know you got the victory, when I went over there and asked him when he challenged me, I already knew. I already knew I got the victory. Huh? Ain't nobody over 50 years old gonna beat me. I'm 53. Nobody. I'm just that company. I got the victory. That because, amen, I know I'm doing something that the average 50 year old ain't doing. I go play basketball every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at 5 o'clock a.m. I go play in the league. I lift weights three times a week. All right, You got to bring it. 
just can't say it. You got to bring it. I know I got the victory because of the work that I put in. But I stop by to tell you with salvation, it ain't about the work that I put in. It's about the work that Christ already put in. The Bible said, but thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I told you on last Sunday, if you're trying to preach your way to heaven, you're going to hell. If you're trying to pastor your way to heaven, you're going to hell. If you're trying to dig your way to heaven, you're going to hell. If you're trying to do all this stuff y'all doing to go to heaven, you're going to hell. Because you can't work your way to heaven. Victory has already been given to us. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him, not believe in your work, whosoever believing in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus went on a revelation and said, I'm he that living and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and I have the keys of death. I stopped by to tell you today that victory over the flesh, as I told you last time, is not automatic. Just because you are a Christian don't mean that you are automatically able to overcome temptation. In other words, we don't have an automatic mindset toward defeating the flesh. I said we don't have an automatic mindset to defeat the flesh. That's why the Bible says, amen, that we have to have a new mind. Amen. The Bible says, amen, those that are in Christ are a new creature. Old things are passed away. The whole all things have become new. So what we have to do, we got to learn how to walk in the victory over the flesh. We already got the victory, but we just got to learn how to walk in the victory. Come on, somebody. Y'all, you know you do have to learn how to walk. Amen. All y'all didn't know how to talk. Y'all, you had to learn how to go to the left. You know I can't dare. I know I done messed it up already. But you learn how to do that. It's the same thing in this Christian walk. Amen. We already got the victory, but you got to learn how to walk in the victory over the flesh. Bible tells us in the latter part of 1 John 3 and 8 that Jesus was manifested on this earth in order to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus was manifested on this earth so that he could destroy the works of the devil. That means that he came to earth, he died on the cross, rose from the dead in order to destroy the power of darkness. That also means that he defeated the power of darkness. Look, the neighbors have already got the victory. Well, if that's the case then, then the battle we're fighting isn't to gain the victory. Because through the works of Christ, we already have the victory. So don't never let that come out your mouth again, come out you trying to get the victory. If you're a mature Christian, you already got the victory. And for many of us, an unseen war is already raging against us. I say unseen wars are already, already wage raging against us. I want you to understand they're fighting us and they're trying to keep us from embracing who we are in Christ. Amen. There's spiritual wars that's coming against us, y'all, trying to stop us from embracing who we are in Christ. But we're reminded in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12, that we can put up our guns and we can put up our knives and we can put up bad mouth and people on Facebook. Uh, and bad mouthing people on social media because we're reminded in Ephesians 6 and 12 uh, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood uh, but against the rulers, against the authority, against the cosmic powers uh, over this present darkness, uh, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Uh, I stop by the day today. We need to be fighting against one another. It's the spiritual darkness. Uh, it's the forces of darkness that is coming against us. Uh, so it's time for us to stop fighting fighting against one another. Don't you understand today while that is true, we're not discouraged. We're not discouraged and neither are we feeling defeated. Remember why you ain't discouraged? Why you don't feel defeated? Because Jesus Christ has already fought the ultimate battle on the cross. And when he fought it, do you know what happened? He won. He won out there on Calvary's hill, y'all. He said in Revelation, I'm he that liveth. He said, I was dead and the whole I'm alive forevermore. And the keys of hell and the keys of death. He said, I got it. 
in my hand. That's why when your enemy tell you they want you to go to hell, laugh at them. That's why when your family tell you they want you to go to hell, laugh at them. That's why when people preach a lot of these condemning messages, talk about you going to hell, laugh at him too. Because Jesus got the keys to heaven and hell. He got the keys to death. I'm about to tell you he in control. I bet you stop minding the way folk want me to go. Say what you want to say. It ain't what you call me, it's what I answer to. Can I get a witness somebody? Stop trying to tell you the name they call them Christ. We fight these battles from a place of victory. And the Bible says that when Jesus died, our flesh died with him. When Jesus died, our flesh died with him. I want you to understand, we don't start with the battle. We start with the victory. Whenever you repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you don't start with the battle. You start with the victory. You got to already know you got the victory. Because if you don't know you got the victory, it'll cause you to question your salvation. If you don't know you got the victory, it'll cause you to question, uh, can I do what God said I can do? Uh, it'll cause you to question, can I be what God said I can be? Uh, but you need to know that when you get saved, you already got the victory. When you get saved, your destination have already changed from hell to heaven. Let the neighbor say, I got the victory. But you understand today, you don't overcome the flesh by fighting the flesh first. Hear me today. You don't overcome the flesh by fighting the flesh first. A lot of people, Reverend, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm start going to church more and doing, doing some things, you know, but, but I, got, I got some things I need to stop doing first. And, you know, I need to get, you, no, you don't no, overcome no, the flesh no. by fighting the flesh. You overcome the flesh by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Come on, somebody. See, when I got saved, I was still doing a whole lot of stuff. Now, I had a change of mind about it. And I said, God, here I am. I don't heard that gospel. And I accept Christ as my Lord and my personal Savior. And I want to be saved. And I want to live the way you want me to live. I said, but God, I'm still struggling with some stuff. I say, but you said, whosoever will, let her come. I say, I was minding my own business. And you showed up like a bill collector. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, I say, I'll let you in. Now you told me what you can do. I accept you in my life. And Lord, here I am. I said, Lord, if you can change me, here I am. But I'm accepting what you said. You said when I accept you that my position have changed from being on my way to hell, that I'm on my way to heaven. I will see you right now in the name of Jesus. And ever since that day, everybody told me I was going to hell. I was laughing at it. I was still selling dope. They told me I was going to hell. I was laughing at it. I was still doing stuff I ain't had no business. They told me I was going to hell. I was laughing at them. Because I had had a conversation with God. Amen. And do you know what happened? Because I had a conversation with God and I didn't try to fight my flesh. I, I didn't try to stop selling drugs on my own. I said, Lord, if you ain't stop me from selling drugs, here I am. Hallelujah. And one day, I lost the desire to sell drugs. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. One day, I lost the desire to tell lies. See, when you come to God, amen, God will clean you up. Somebody say he'll wash you up. That's why I'm trying to tell you, I don't care about you smoking the weed. Come on down here with us. I don't care about you drinking. Come on down here with us. I don't care about you home walking. Come on down here with us. If you come on down here with us, you can be a cop dick. Come on down here with us. Ain't nothing to hear but us. Ain't nothing to hear now but ex murders and ex liars. Amen. Ex this and ex that. All of us ex up. You're an ex-fornicator or you're a fornicator. The Bible says all of the adulterers and murder and murder and thieves. Come on, somebody. I want you to understand that today. The Bible said it. So we fight these battles from a place of victory and not defeat. You fight the flesh. Hear me today. You fight the flesh by coming in agreement in your mind and in your heart with what God says about you and your identity. Come on, get to a stopping point now. I say you fight the flesh by coming in agreement in your mind and in your heart with what God says about you and your identity in Christ. 
You don't fight with the struggle that you're currently going through. The struggle will stop you from coming. So don't fight with the struggle. See, the current struggle that you're going through is by birth. Right. I say the current struggle that you're going through is by birth. Somebody say by birth. See, by birth is where we identify with Adam. The Bible said the vision of Psalm 51 and 5, the whole I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. In other words, I have been evil since the day I've been born. Every one of us, we've been evil from the day that we have been born. From the time our mother conceived us, we have been sinful. Somebody say I'm a born sinner. See what people fail to realize that you were born to do wrong. How you gonna fight something you were born to do? You were born to do wrong. How you gonna fight wrong with wrong? They told me two wrongs. <laughs> you can't fight wrong with wrong. You can't fight flesh with flesh. Come on, somebody. We were sinners before we left our mother's womb. Don't you dare come in here thinking that hey, people in the church holy been holy all their life. They just a little more holy than they were before. They ain't all that now. Uh, uh, look at it. I told you he ain't all that holy. That Tuesday had me thinking about smoking marijuana, take some cocaine, something to take that thing away. Amen. I think about that. Thing. Lord Jesus. Amen. I know I shouldn't think like this, but Jesus, have mercy because your boy getting ready to fall. So, I was born to do wrong. But I want you to understand today. Man that is born of a woman is a few days that full of trouble. I want you to understand today we identify with Adam. When we come into agreement in our mind, we come into agreement in our heart with what God says about us. What he says about us in our identity in Christ, our fight is different. I say when you come into identity with what God says about us in Christ, your fight becomes different. Instead of fighting from a place of defeat and struggle, we fight from a place of victory. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer I have overcome. In other words, Jesus said, I've spoken these words unto you that in me you can have peace. He said, in this world, you're going to have troubles. In this world, you're going to have struggles. In this world, you're going to have conflict. He said, but go ahead and get excited because I've overcome the world. So if I am in him and he is in me, everything that he overcome, I overcome. If I am in him and he is in me, if greater is he than he that is in me than he that is in the world, I can overcome everything. Somebody say, I got the victory. What you understand is by baptism that we identify with Christ. We identify with Christ. We classify with Christ. From the point of his victory, we can fight. From the point of his death, we can put to death the lust of the flesh and the powers of darkness. So when we must realize today, our fight is to remind ourselves. Our fight is to remind the powers of darkness that Jesus has already won. Yeah. And when we fight, we just fight and remind him. Yeah, God already won. That's why I won't lay down. Because he already won. Yeah. It's a fixed fight. Yeah, it is. Somebody say a fixed fight. Yeah. So we understand your identity. He say, I won't allow no more right. to be on you than you're able right. to bear. Right. He say, there ain't no temptation that I've taken you, but such as is common to man. Right. In other words, what God is saying, what you going through, you ain't special. Right. Somebody already else done been through it. Right. And what we got to remember that we serve a God that don't have. I, I, I see, I need to be talking to some people who had a toothache before. For that pain would hit me so bad, I thought 
thought I was, I thought I was special. <laughs> Jesus ain't never had a toothache like this. I thought I was special. But God said, you ain't special. He said, anything you go through, somebody else has already been through. Can I be with you, somebody? Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't that special. So saints of God, as I heard to a close, we got to learn to battle from a position of victory. And it starts by looking to Jesus and how he operated while he was on earth. I said, we got to learn, y'all, how to battle from a position of victory, which starts by looking at Jesus and how he operated on the earth. Let's pick up part two on next Sunday. But if we're going to have the victory, let's go start by looking at Jesus and how he operated. See, the dance like new addition. You got to look at him. You got to watch how he operate. And then you got Y'all hear what Melissa Yates said. She said, stick to preaching. <laughs> I think I'll do that. <laughs> I come by to tell you today. Your journey has become too hard. Because you're fighting for the victory. You're struggling. You, you're trying to make heaven your home. But when you accepted him and identified with him, heaven is already your home. And God is saying, there's too many people in the body of Christ. You're still struggling. You're trying to work. He said, but I told you in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 that, that you're not saved by your works. Huh? But you're saved by grace through faith. Not a works. Lest any man should boast. You heard how I was boasting? How I can beat him on the court? And I was boasting because of the work that I put in. That's what I was boasting about. And God said, I'm going to fix it with you. Because when you start preaching for me, I want you to understand the day you ain't getting to heaven because of you preaching. See, I have to be on my way to heaven before I start preaching. I can't boast and say, well, I know I'm going to heaven. Some people get up, well, I've been pastoring 65 years. You can pass the 100 years and go to hell. You can't boast about what you do for God and think that's going to get you in. I got the victory because of what Christ did for me. And if somebody's here today and you know that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And you willing to accept him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, whosoever, don't care what your record is, don't care what you're still in, but whosoever shall call on the name. Don't care how many servants you don't miss. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. At this time of the day, the door of the church is open. And if you're not saved, you ought to come. Give God a hand of praise.
Today, man, I'm going to give her a temporary, temporary hand of fellowship, amen, but on the fourth Sunday, amen, we'll put in with the rest of the candidates, amen, and we'll, amen, extend her the official right hand of fellowship. Come on, give her a hand of welcome, amen. Show your glory, dear God. 
Set her free from this bondage. Heal her right now, dear God. Do it in the name of Jesus, dear God. Anoint her mind. Anoint her lips. Anoint her heart. Anoint her hands. Anoint her soul. Right now, in the name of Jesus, dear God. We thank you, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. If you do it, God, souls are going to be saved. Because so many know her testimony. Others going to be delivered because of what you do for her, dear God. Guide her by the reins of mine, God. Give her a yearning for you, God. Keep her coming to the place of worship. That she can gain the strength that she needs from her true brothers and sisters in Christ. Do it for your glory, God. Thank you. Repeat after me. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a hand up for us. Lift your head up. Lift your head up. You got victory. Lift your head up. Nothing to hold your head down about. God told me to tell you it's important that you change your company. And changing your company is going to cause you some pain. See, a lot of people think that to get victory is all feel good. But sometimes get victory causes pain. Because we have to let go of the familiar. We have to let go of those things. Let go of those people. Who are leading us down the wrong path. Embrace them, embrace them. And God said, you're going to have to let go some people that you're depending on. And you got to depend on God. He said, he's the source of your strength. He said, he's the one that healeth you. He's the one that delivers you. You're going to have to let go. Somebody, I don't know who they are. But somebody you love so much that you're going to have to let them go. Come ye out from among them. Separate yourselves. God say he'll be for you what nobody else can be for you. You got the victory. But now you got to walk. You got to walk in that victory. You got to let it go. I want to tell you this. I'm going to tell you what. The man came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, he said, my son is sick. He said, and if thou canst heal him, he said, I want you to heal him. And what Jesus said, Jesus said, if thou can't believe, I can heal him. And I understand what you're saying. Sometimes we feel like that we just can't let some things go. Give us some tissue. So we feel like we just can't let some things go. We feel like we can't let some people go. And that's the human side of us. We've been with things so long we attach to them. But God through his spirit can detach us. And what you're going to have to say to God. God, I can't do it. But if you can help me. If you can give me the strength. I'll let it go. I'll let it go. And I stop by to tell you. You ain't in this fight by yourself. The representation of your father coming up in a hug you right now. Is what God is trying to tell you from hell. He's wrapping his arms around you. You don't have to do it by yourself. God is going to do it. He is source of your script. 
if he don't deliver you, it's already done. It's already done. We're going to walk with you. We're going to go through this with you. You ain't got to go through by yourself. Walk up to a seat, Daddy. We're going to get with you. Somebody say, the victor is hers. Come on, point out, point out. Point out and say, the victor is hers. The victor is her. And the if you see her in the street, if you see her in the grocery store,
Because when we examine ourselves, we have to make sure that we have confessed our sins to God. And ask God to forgive us and make a word to partake in this supper. Because if we partake in the Lord's Supper and we do it in an unworthy manner, meaning that we know there's some unconfessed sin in our life, and we partake in the Lord's Supper unworthy, the Bible said, for this reason, many are sick among you. And the Bible said that there are also many who are asleep. They died early because they were chastened of the Lord. And the Bible declared that God chastised those who he loved. In other words, God had to chastise them to get them to a point so that they can repent and then call them on home. But I want you to understand today, this is serious and we ought to show the Lord death till we come. And we do that by asking God to forgive us of our sins and creating us a clean heart, renewing us the right spirit. And somebody said, Reverend, if it's that serious, then I don't want anything to do with it. Where if you in him and he is in you, then you tell him you don't want nothing to do with him. And if you be ashamed to own him before me, he said, I'll be ashamed to own you before my Father which is in heaven. So there's only one way to make it right. And that is we go to God and pray and ask God to forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. And I stop by to tell you today, if you go to God and pray by faith, God will make everything all right. At this time, Minister Yates is going to bless the Lord's Supper. And the Bible also said that we ought to tarry one for another. You know, on the human side, sometimes we think we know stuff about other people. On the human side. But can I tell you that sometimes everything ain't what it seems like. But if you think it's something, if you who you need to be, you won't be sitting there saying, well, I know they ain't going to partake. What you'll be saying, you'll be saying, Lord, when you clean me up, Clean my sister up. Clean my brother up. Because just like I don't want to drink up word, I don't want them to drink up word. That's what true love will do. And if you can't do that, you better examine your own self. At this time now, she's going to lead us in the blessing. Amen of the Lord's Supper. After the blessing, Minister Perry Bray Boy will pass the Lord's Supper for that ministry. Amen to the office, to the congregation. Once they have faced the congregation, everyone that's a believer will stand. Follow the sisters of the ushers. Come take the communion back to your seat. Go ahead and prepare it. And we'll all eat and drink together. Let us say yes.
fair. As we all prepare, you welcome, darling. As we prepare, amen, to partake in the Lord's Supper, the Bible declares that Jesus took the bread before the disciples and he broke it. And he said, This is my body which was broken for you. And they all ate. He took the fruit of the vine and after they had been blessed, he said, this is my blood which was shed for you in the New Testament and they all drink. At this time, the ushers, amen, are going to come to gather the fragments. It's because this is sacred. It has been dedicated to God. It must be discarded. So please don't put it in your pocket or take it away from here. It must be discarded. The Bible says that they sung a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. And they were not going to sing a hymn. But we're going to sing, amen, a Zion song and go out into a world that's good and very good. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with the world. It's the people that's in the world. Can I get a witness about it? Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, the sun, the moon, they all doing what they're supposed to do. Amen. But it's just the people that's in the world. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and stand, amen, for this missile.
to the highest mountain and flow us to the lowest valley and we know it was the blood that saved us dear God we thank you for this worship experience touch it, but thank you for how you touched our hearts and our soul and our mind and thank you for this experience we ask now dear God that you dismiss us from this place of worship but never from your sight dismiss us dear God from this assembly worship and now we will worship you individually until we can come back to corporately and worship you again. To God, we pray to God that the victory that has been given to us help us to walk in this victory. That others may see and know that there is a God somewhere because you have all power in your hand. We thank you now, God. Dismiss us physically. Dismiss us virtually. In Jesus' name we pray. Y'all got people said amen. 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 You're dismissed. God bless you.